prevailed. Another good word, overcome. I love the word overcome. Chapter 2 and 3 loves that word too. He who overcomes, I promise this blessing. He who overcomes, I promise this blessing. It's one of my favorite titles. My favorite title, I think, is from Colossians 3.1, where Paul says, if you've been raised with Christ, and then he goes on to say something about the wonder of that. You know, what, John, tell me, you sound religious. No, I'm not really religious. Well, you sound religious. Well, I'm not. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I've been born again. I've been born of the Spirit, born from above. I've been raised with Christ. I am an overcomer. Overcomer? What have you overcome? Sin, death, and hell. You want to talk about it? Let's talk about that. I mean, what can you overcome, folks? Say everything. Say it again. Say it again. You can overcome everything. If you haven't been using that title for yourself, start using it. It's a great title. But he has prevailed, he's overcome, he is able to open the scroll, loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, in the midst right there, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Listen, this lamb, when he died on the cross the first time, he wasn't standing. He died and he went to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And when this person stands, you better pay attention. He stands up. And we need to pay attention. You know what? In chapter 7 of the book of Acts, Stephen is being stoned by the... That's why I don't want to be... Religious people are crazy. They are! The most dangerous nuts in the world, Dan, are religious nuts. Because they think they're, that God told me to do this. I might be zealous, but I'm no religious nut. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I just want to lead, lead them to heaven. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to strap a bomb on me and walk into a building in the name of God. Are you kidding me? If there's ever been a satanic religion, there it is. Taking life. He's standing. He stood when, when Stephen was being stoned illegally. And he died. Stephen said, I saw him standing. And that's the interceding ministry of Jesus Christ for every saint who is in trouble. He is standing on your behalf. Whether you know it, whether you see it, He is. He stands for us, and in heaven, here He is standing. He's got some. there's an action, and He's a lamb as though it had been slain. I, don't, I want more details. I love Moses. He, he was a bit brash. He was humble. But he said, God, I have seen your works. I've seen your power. I've, I've, I was through all the Egypt thing and I saw you on Sinai, but I want to see your glory. I want to see you in your fullness. Some people would have called that foolish. God liked it. Did you hear me? God liked it. God liked it when, he, when Moses said, I want more of you, God. Give me more. Uh, we might think he's had enough. He didn't think he had enough. God says, Moses, I don't mind showing me all of you, but if I did, then we'd be a little bit closer than we all now, are now. You die. You can't see me and live. But I'll show you my back. And I'll hide in the cleft of the rock. And Moses didn't get all that he wanted. But he got more than I've seen. Amen? Amen? This is powerful. I don't know what it means as if slain, but in eternity, forever and ever and ever, we will recognize the Lord, the Lamb, the Lion. He, he will have the marks of a slain sacrifice. And there's a great reminder for us to give him praise. And he had seven horns. And by the way, those represent authority. Horns represent authority. Perfect authority. Perfect power. He is the perfect omnipotent one. That's what seven horns mean. What else did he have? He had seven eyes. He is the perfect omniscient one. Everywhere, all the time. Knows all things. Sees all things. No such thing as a secret with the Lord. 
These are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And then He came and He took the scroll out of the right hand of Him who sat on the throne. Everything before now is somewhat of speculation, but He comes and He can take it and He does open it. He does look at it. When He had taken the scroll, just the fact that He could brought worship. Before He read anything, what does God have to do for you for you to worship Him? I think of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're Babylonian names. They're pagan names given to them to try to change their loyalty. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael is what we should call them. They're Jewish names. They're believer names. The king said, you will worship me or you will die. And they said, we will, will not worship you. And you, this is how you pray right here, folks. You ready for this? For our God is able to deliver us. Amen. You believe that? Amen. You've ever, you ever been 100 feet from a furnace that would consume? You ever been in that situation? God has given us bib real biblical passages that are beyond anything we've ever experienced so that we can have confidence when we get anything near that situation. Our God is able to deliver us, but here it is, folks. But even if He doesn't, we won't bow. I don't, I don't need God to do more than He's done. He saved my soul. Everything else is bonus. I need that reminder because I'm a belly aker. Show me the fellow belly akers in here. You belly ache. Okay, thank you. So if you're a guest and you're a belly aker, you're right at home right here. People say, how you doing, Pastor John? I can't complain. And then I say this sometimes, but I still do. We say things so flippantly. I may have to talk faster here. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. That should motivate us, folks. And they sang a new song. And the, this is the song, You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us, purchased us, bought us to God by your blood. Glory to the Father, chapter 4, glory to the Son. Let there be no doubt who he's talking about. Out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. I love that phrase. We sang that phrase five times. That's mentioned in Revelation. Those groupings are together five times. Though it's a Jewish book with Jewish flavor all over it, book of Revelation. This is a word of encouragement to all people everywhere, regardless of where they live, what tribe they belong to, or the tongue they speak. And you have made us kings. And you can see that. These 24 elders are, have crowns and thrones. God treats, we are royalty. You've made us kings. You've given us a kingdom. And we are priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures and the elders. You notice that they're getting involved in this worship. The elders and living creatures now myriads of myriads of angels. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. I don't know how to add that up. I think what he's saying is there's more than you can count. And they said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom. The riches of Christ are not possessions but faithfulness. Humility, people that reflect Him and represent Him well. And strength and honor and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying. By the way, listen, every creature. Christ is not creature. You're a creature and I'm a creature because we were created Creatures are created things. And every time a Jehovah Witness comes to my house, I'm going to open this up 
and read this to him, I'll tell him. 